testing, testing. Clap. Please clap. You can do this. You're a big strong man. What's up, you friggin' video watching goof troop? I write a book every month, and here's how you can write a book in a month. Now I hear tell that people are writing a book a month for National Novel Writing Month, or Nashnom Rhymon for short. I have been doing that for 10 months straight as part of a project I call Author's Dozen. Can you guess how many books I plan to write in 2020? Want to take a wild guess? So I wrote those and put them for free on my internet. And I've had professionals come and critique those things and talk about their own journeys and it's a whole thing. Anyway, I'm taking one single stinking day off this year to make the last video you'll ever need for the purposes of writing a book in a month, which is good because you should stop watching YouTube right now. I won't see you in the comments because I'll be writing and so will you. Do not like, share, subscribe. The best fodder and best advice you're ever gonna get about novel writing, surprise, surprise, is in books. Surprise X4. The best novelists are probably better at writing books than they are at doing the YouTubes. That's actually gonna be the framing device of this video. I'm gonna make the worst YouTube video of all time in order to teach you how to write a novel in a month. The badness is a part of it. Part one, commit to very badness. Your novel this month has to meet three requirements. Number one, it's 50,000 words long. Number two, it's a complete story. And number three, it fulfills the first two requirements. Now, it's been said by me that great is the enemy of good. So that's why I'm recording in an, on a phone in my apartment uh, while my upstairs neighbor has the nerve, the gall even, to walk on her floor. And that's for sure why I haven't edited this video very well. It was all on purpose. And the lesson in all this is that your novel won't be great. It probably won't be very good, but it might just be good. But in order to get there and find out, your novel must be complete in 50,000 words. The reason I think you should complete a story in 50,000 words is because you should finish a book for once in your idiot life. Don't be one of these people who runs a half marathon and says, I gotta run another half. <laughs> Why would I even need to run a full marathon? I already know I can do it. I recommend uh, 2,000 words a day, which Math, 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 oh, numbers, math. Um, that'll equal uh, 60,000 words uh, in the month of November. Now, 50,000 is the minimum, uh, according to how people are doing this arbitrarily. And you might even get lucky and have a few days off. Uh, some people say your daily word count should be 1666, but I don't mess around with that. Devilry. Like a wise man once said, shoot for the moon. And even if you miss, you may land among the cold vacuum of space. Besides that, you're probably gonna mess up some stuff with the plot and the characters, so you might as well give yourself some wiggle room. Part two, triangle. Gaze ye mortal in wonder upon the mystical word triangle. Some of you may have a plot in mind already. Uh, some of you even have the plot planned out. Plot is only one leg of your story. Now there are two other things you have to be concentrating on while you're writing. People and prose. All right, so here's the three points real quick. Plot, begin your story, middle your story, and end your story. Start with a very interesting occurrence. Explore the implications of said occurrence and resolve that occurrence. So between all this, don't gum up the plot in too many details. People usually don't care about or remember a bunch of complicated plot points or whatever. Um, and you only have 50,000 words. That's not a lot. All right, for people, here's how you do a people. Those are characters, but I needed three Ps. With people, create characters who have discernible traits and who will act in predictable ways. If you want your characters to change, Great. Make something happen to them that changes their minds rather than just having them arbitrarily change. All right, for the prose point, 
Your words are not secondary. They're not just filler. You're not just typing word after word after word after word to meet your deadline like I just done. The people in plot might seem perfect in your head, but it's how you wield your prose that'll communicate that perfection to anyone who reads your work. Now, some people have a really grand picture in their mind when they begin a painting. Ooh, ooh, paint, paint. But when they're done, you can tell that they really didn't take care with their communication. And in all honesty, if you're writing stuff that you would not personally enjoy reading, you're not gonna personally enjoy writing it. Do try to have a little fun along the way, you joyless capitalist drone. If you focus too much on any one of these points, you might miss out on the others. What's too much focus? What's not enough focus? You decide, you're smart. Part three, ah, push it. Now the number one issue that you usually find in Natnov Raimon books is that they don't exist. By that I mean that most people quit and they don't finish. Here are three hashtag life hacks that you can use to make sure that doesn't happen to you. Number one, get people to hold you accountable. Tell somebody you trust right now that on December 1st, you're going to have a finished book in their inbox. The number one reason why I've been able to write 10 books in 10 months is that I'd feel embarrassment. If people were waiting on my novel and they were to hear that I gave up and couldn't even do this one little thing, it my head hurts. Now, if you're embarrassed about what you wrote, or if you just want to cry about it not being ready like a little baby, you can just tell the person not to read it and to verify that it is indeed 50,000 words. You don't have to send this to your worst enemy, though that would be a good motivation. You can send this to your grandma, and if you don't have a grandma, you can send it to my grandma, and she'll tell you you're real nice and a good little whatever your gender is. All right, second, life hack. Meet those daily counts. 2000 or 1666 for you friggin' pagan Jesus haters out there is a taxing but doable daily word count. Miss one day and you'll have 4,000 words due. Miss another day and you'll have 6,000 words due. You get that, you friggin' math blasters? You 2000ers will at least have five days of downtime, though you shouldn't count on it. And you 1666ers will have no cushion. Just like you'll have no cushion in hell. Number three, make this a job. Don't quit your job to make this your job. Just take like a second job, like an American. Set aside time in your schedule. Tell people you can't go to their Tupperware parties. Tell your wife you can't be there for the birth of the child because this is November, the arbitrary month where we decide we're gonna write novels. See, it really don't matter if you lose this fight. It really don't matter if the book sucks either. Because all you want to do is go the distance. And if you can go the distance, you see, and the bell rings and you're still standing, you're going to know for the first time in your life that you weren't just another bum from the neighborhood. Part four. Why? Thank you for coming to my PowerPoint presentation. Now you know three bullet points of three bullet points. Well, looky there. Now you know how to write a novel in a month. But why do that when you could just not? And you know the drill. Here are three lies that you've probably told yourself. Three. I just, that's just how I do it. Number one, what is good in life is what makes me comfortable and free. And that's a lie that has made this generation quite depressed and quite suicidal. This may be news to you, but you were not designed to be a filter feeding sponge. What makes novels wonderful is what makes life wonderful. You're given these gifts, these stories, but you have to work for it a little bit. You gotta interpret a little bit. The author does incredible things with the people, the plot, and the prose, but it's up to you what you do with that. It's why your favorite games and films are the challenging ones. It's why the uncommitted are sad, and why the committed are a little bit less sad. All right, the second lie you're probably telling yourself is that your ideas are precious and rare friggin worth protecting. And let me tell you, after writing 10 such ideas, I found out that's grade A baloney. Is there grade A baloney? I don't know. The only way I've found of 
seeing if an idea is any good is to put some flesh on it and see if it dances or collapses into a pile of disjointed limbs and screams, kill me, kill me. Your idea should be put into practice as soon as possible. Your idea doesn't develop on its own. It'll wither and die if you don't exercise it. There's no ideal moment. Just give it a go right now. All right, line number three, there's something better that you, dear viewer, could be doing with your time. I had devoted a year to this, and let me tell you this, Nat Navraimon, it's gonna be very beneficial for you. Maybe you'll find out you like writing books. Maybe you find out you really don't, and your talents and joy lie in the exact opposite direction. Maybe you'll come up with a good book, or maybe you'll just get a bad book out of the way as practice. And the reason I say all this is that if Anne Lucky or Angie Thomas or George R. R. Martin wanted to write a book in a single month, I would probably be a waste of their talent. But if you're not one of those people, and if you are, please contact me on my internet. But if you aren't, what's the worst that could happen? Like, it's just a flipping month. It's not nothing, but it's a month, you know? And if you're thinking that this is for you, and if you could devote a month, just a month, to figuring out if it is, you should really, really, really give this a go. And this is where I reveal my friggin' Scooby-Doo monster trap. You see, I have an ulterior motive to making this video. While NaNoWriMo does occasionally produce the bones of a great work of literature, its chief benefit to society is that it gets people who might otherwise not have written a great novel to do so. And I would very much like to see what you write in a month. Yes, you. You who come from a place where writers don't normally come from. You, who are not the type of person who writes a novel. You, the unprecedented you. What sorts of wonderful writing could only come from you? So if you need me to be your grandma and hold you accountable for your monthly writing goal and tell you you're a good little whatever gender you are, then go to my internet and send me a little messagey poo telling me what your writing goals are and when you plan to have it done. I'll try to be in touch. And if I don't get in touch, it's because too many people are trying to get me into touching them. That's not what I meant to say. All right, you ready? 1,700 to 2,000 words a day. It's not that hard. For instance, the video you just watched was about 1,900, give or take whatever I'm saying right now. Doorknob. All right, no more vids. Stop making the videos be watched or prepare for a big spank.